Hi, my name is Leslie Williams and I'm in San Diego, California. <clears throat> I'm trying to prop up my camera so, so you can see me well. Excuse me for a second, I should have had this. There we go, sorry about that. My name is Leslie Williams and I am in San Diego, California. And I'm making this particular video file while I'm cooking my dinner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, as a result of being a, a target and victim and activist concerning the criminal expeditions of what is known as organized stalking, which can also be termed as gang stalking, uh, targeted individuals experience community-based harassment on a daily basis everywhere they go, in one form or another. And these, these programs, hang on one second. These programs of harassment are not the only thing that happens to us targeted individuals. Oh, sorry, individuals. We have every aspect of our personal lives and our independence and our credit. Everything is destroyed purposely, intentionally, with complete malice of forethought and criminal intent by the individuals who are managing these expeditions, individuals who are in the system. Now, if you take the time to do your thorough invest uh, to do a thorough investigative meticulous uh, research with an investigative posture on the internet when it comes to these criminal expeditions, you will for one be able to know what's dif disinformation and what is not. Okay, and uh, the best thing to do if you decide to research these crimes is to pay close attention to every single thing that a target says in their blogs and YouTube videos. Uh, targeted individuals like me and every other targeted individual out there that's a true bona fide target because even the perpetrators will get online and pretend to be uh, targets and they will also form front groups pretending to advocate for targets in order to suck targets in to run to them so they can be robbed and discredited. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, Americans believe that they're free. Okay, because we were we were born if we were born and raised in America, or if you come to America and you become a citizen, you believe that you are now an American and that you are free and that you uh, have in, inherited certain inalienable rights as a result of being an American. Do not believe this lie. Do not believe it whatsoever. You might think to yourself, well, if I never get in trouble with the law, or if I if I don't break the law. Uh, if I don't, you might think to yourself, if I don't break the law, then I shouldn't have no reasons why the government would be bothering me. Do not be believe this. Sorry, my squirrels are here. Do not believe this lie as, as well. You know, um, every single aspect of our lives is totally torn down, destroyed, and kept destroyed. As a result of these programs being covertly managed by third parties, I'd say at least 85% of all targeted individuals do not know the, the perpetrators who are managing the organized stalking and gang stalking that is happening against them. And I'm here today, fellow American citizens, to tell you that uh, I came out here to San Diego on August 8, 2011. And I knew that I was um, uh, being gang stalked. Uh, see, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening to me and my personal life was gang stalking until June 9, 2009. Now, I was out here in San Diego between 1 and 38 days in 2006. And I was being gang stalked on a fever scale just like I was in Michigan. This is a nationwide syndicate that operates on the same templates of methods and behaviors. Okay? So basically what I'm saying is nothing but a nationwide syndicate that has infiltrated the system at every level in every state. Yes. And if you find that hard to believe, well then all you have to do is look at some of the petitions that targets have online. Take a look at who signs them. Targeted individuals from every state are signing other target, targeted individuals' petitions. Uh, and you can also just take, if you do thorough extensive research into these crimes, you will automatically be able to deduce that uh, us targeted individuals are posting petitions all over the internet and that we are from every state in the United States. So, as a result of being American, uh, and being a target of these crimes, I have definitely 100% come to realize that every single one of my civil rights and human rights have been violated to the extreme. And the government does to protect these crimes because a lot of targeted individuals end up becoming what is known as non-consensual human experimentation targets as well. You can go to Google and type in a gang stalking tech, everything you need to know. It's a manifesto of a manager of organized stalking gang stalking crews. 
he flat out states that they consider us targets as nothing but lab rats. And um, I'm keeping an eye on my ravioli. This is a book right here called The Invisible Crime. Okay? And if you went to Amazon and purchased this book, the only way that you could even begin to thoroughly understand what's written in this book, and by the way, organized stalking is mentioned throughout this entire book, the only way that you could understand this book in reference to what has happened to this individual is to go to the bottom of Freedom From Covert Harassment and Surveillance and look on the very bottom of their homepage. You'll find three PDF links. And you can also go to SurveillanceIssues.com and look at everything on their webpage. And then go to UnitedTargetedIndividualsEurope.com because these campaigns are going on in every single, practically in every single country. This is another book titled Electronic Torture, Electronic Rape, Technology, and Gang Stalking at the Post Office. And post employees are huge players in organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions because they are used when needed to be so to uh, monitor a target's mail, including the mail theft and mail delayment of a target's rent in order to cause the homelessness. If you thoroughly, if just in your first week of investigating organized stalking and gang stalking, you will clearly be able to deduce that creating homelessness of targets is one of their main objectives. Okay? Now you might think to yourself, why, why is all this going on and, and how could all this be going on with the government allowing it considering the fact that there's at least 500,000 targets right now in the United States, at least, at least, okay? So when you look at just that statistic alone and not one person has ever got online and said I was a gang, I, I, I was or am a gang stalking target or an organized stalking target, because target, it's the same crime just goes by two different names excuse me you would never be able to find one video or one blog stating that any targeted individual got one bit of help except for maybe James Walbert and his help was limited even though it was pretty good help uh, he's the and he's from Kansas and um, these crimes are directly connected to all sorts of different cr oh sorry these crimes are directly connected to all different sorts of uh, of criminal expeditions and motivations that you can think of. Anything but from human trafficking to sexual servitude rings to prostitution rings to land co-opting, property co-opting, mortgage co-opting, trust fund liquidation, identity theft, illegally making people wards of the state so these people can be pipelined to a syndicated organized crime group home. So they can be treated like straw people, so the insurance can be exploited, uh, so monthly benefits can be applied for in that person's name, and so they can be sexually exploited and even still used as non-consensual human experimentation targets as well. Targeted individuals are also set up to be put in prison because of the prison industrial complex that is now booming in America, which most people don't even know about. Yeah, so where innocent people are being set up to be put in jail on 100% bogus, uh, bogus, bogus, bogus claims and arrests because these, uh, these prisons and detention centers are privately owned. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, all you got to do is go to Google and type in a Pennsylvania judge sentenced to 28 years for pipelining first-time misdemeanor children to the full maximum sentence because every play, every person, every child that he pipelined to that detention center, which was privately owned, got federal funds per child. When those funds came in, the detention center pipelined a portion of them back to the judge and he got caught and got 28 years. Then you can go to Google. Hang on one second, I'm going to take a bite of my dinner here. Then you can go to Google and type in how four mentally disabled individuals were kept locked in a basement for 10 full years so one skanked out free could get, get a hold of their social security checks. Yeah, and she had the identification cards of 50 other people on disability. Now, I'm a good woman, okay? I'm not involved in any illegal activity whatsoever, whatsoever, or any criminal activity whatsoever either. I came back out to San Diego for the first time since 2006 on August 8, 2011, and the organized stalking, gang stalking, was even going on on the Greyhound bus on my way to here from Connecticut. Yes. And I have been gang stalked on a feverish scale every single place that I have went throughout the whole duration of the time that it's spent at each place that I have went to. Yes, including universities, public libraries, businesses, even this hiking area. Literally. Okay, excuse me. Now, I have already undisputably proven that I'm a victim of this crime. Excuse me, please, sorry. I had to eat though before it got cold. I have already uh, undisputably proved that I'm a victim of this crime. 
And my whole goal when I came back to San Diego was to make sure that I minded my own business every single second while I was out here. The most that I do will make small talk with maybe somebody on a bus, a trolley, uh, or at a business. Small talk, and that's it. I have not introduced myself by name to one person out here except for specific San Diego police officers and specific university police officers, and that only occurred after a gang stalking incident happened. They're called street theaters and gang stalking expeditions. And all of my blogs and YouTube videos are titled Learning Disabled Woman. So how did they know how did they how did they know in order to be able to come back uh, how did they know that I came back to San Diego in order to have me gang stalked out here again? How did they know? Well, the manifesto that I mentioned earlier that's online that you can go to and find by typing in a gang stalking tech, everything you need to know. It's a manifesto of the manager of gang stalking crews. He flat out states that when a target's in one state and goes to move into another state, the target that was in uh, the state that was in the target, the syndicate that was in the uh, state the target was in, will pay off the syndicate in the state the target's going into to take over in a campaign towards the target. Yes. Now, targeted individuals like me are denied the ability to be able to make a police report were set up to be uh, falsely arrested, falsely jailed, and falsely institutionalized by the syndicated members that are in the system. Because they're using even law enforcement tools in order to be able to solicit the community-based harassment that we experience along all of our routes, which is what is known as the community notification or the offender's notification. I, had, I don't have one single uh, felony on my record whatsoever. 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 And I'm not involved in any illegal activity whatsoever. So, if you go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking in the community notification or the offender's notification, you will be able to see in part this is how they're able to solicit the community at large to harass the target for them based on slander. And if you don't believe this aspect of it, you can, get, you can observe a preliminary introduction in reference to how easy it is to dupe any community member to harass the target for anybody based on the prestige of a badge, whether it be a real one or a fake one, and a lie. You can go to YouTube and type in, listen to a stranger. Okay? So, on a daily basis, I am literally harassed everywhere I go through clever, overt sensitization methods that are, that, are, that are designed for me to either hear or see along all of my routes. And that is achieved as a result of tracking me throughout, throughout about the whole entire day, each day, everywhere I go. So they're able to then put the crap that harassment around me as a result of the tracking of me. And this is how it operates. So if you can imagine to yourself, you have in every single aspect of your personal life and independence destroyed, blacklisted from employment, okay, uh, kept from any uncorrupted legal assistan assistance, denied the ability to make a police report, assaulted, go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on an MTS bus. Then go to Google and type in learning to save a woman exposes how MTS assault video was altered. Yes. And why won't the San Diego District Attorney's Office investigate this factual reality? Why won't they? You just got to ask yourself that one simple question. Why won't they? And why won't the San Diego Police invest investigate the fact that that video MTS sent me of me being assaulted was sent by MTS to me altered? Why? Well... When I was out here in 2006, I made and sent some emails concerning some of the things that I was experiencing back in 2006, and also the San Diego Police played a direct role in an orchestrated stage street theater of me, of me towards me, in order to influence me and coerce me to go back to Michigan, where I was tortured, sexually exploited, robbed, and where I was a victim of insurance racketeering. Yeah from November 2006 all the way up until August 8, 2011. And they know they were involved in it, along with some library employees from the Point Loma Library, a woman by the name of Mimi, several other library employees, and a, secu a security guard. So how can we, as, as and they know these emails are still alive in reference to the, them still being physically present in their, in their Yahoo accounts. So how can someone like me get help when these individuals are doing nothing but protecting their butt because they know what they did in 2006? So they just figured that they initiated the campaign against out uh, against me out here 
that I would fall and break. What they're after when it comes to me is syndicated probate control for racketeering purposes and sexual exploitation purposes and to conceal the crimes that have already happened to me and so the crimes can continue in an isolated environment they control. Remember the, ten men to, uh, the four mentally disabled individuals kept in a basement for 10 full years. Do you honestly think that stuff like that's not going on? What these criminals are doing is going into the HUD house, the, the, HUD, ho the HUD housing department. I'm a little tongue-tied in, tied in this video. And they're buying up uh, all these homes that were taken over by the mortgage cri uh, crisis and foreclosures. And they're going and buying all these homes, and they're buying them through very cheap rates, and they're setting them up. And then they, then they place in these homes or hire people to, to work in these homes that have certificates that are given to them by the state. Bullshit training certificates that they get for attending training classes for like two months. And they're designed in order to be able to say that this person is legally able to take care of somebody's on disability. And then the owners of these homes who are directly connected to organized stalking, gang stalking crews go hunting for the elderly, veterans, and people on disability, including single women and single mothers. Because they also own foster care homes as well. And that's where they try to put the mother that's got the, the single mother out on the street with, with the child, blacklist them from employment, and then wait until they can get a hold of them by claiming the mother can't take care of the child in order to be able to place the child in syndicated foster care while trying to make the mother into a prostitute. Ah, this, is, this is literally, literally, literally the depths of what they're involved in. Excuse me. So, the reason why they're, uh, they've escalated their campaign towards me like you would not believe because of the pushes that they've used as a result of the community notification, okay? Now, the community notification, notification was illegally and criminally used in order to get students at USD, SDSU, and UCSD to, and employees, yes, including campus safety, to harass me with organized stalking, gang stalking techniques and tactics of me since I've been back out here since August 8, 2011. And on March 6, 2013, I caught a North University San Diego Public Library branch manager engaging in gang stalking. You would not believe the proof that I have. It's literally undisputable. Like the fact that you can go to YouTube and type in 2 4 slash 24 slash 13 learning disabled woman catches another gang stalker admitting center harass. And you can also go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman catches gang stalker admitting center harass. <coughs> Make sure you look at everything that is in the description of each of those two separate videos so you can cross-reference the statements that are made concerning the materials that are in the description of each of those YouTube videos to the dates of the YouTube videos and blogs and cross-reference them to the host videos that they are in. And you will come to understand that the things that I was talking about before I caught those three teenagers admitting to what they admitted to were already being video blogged about by me on the internet which shows stalking on more than one occasion. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. And uh, so, in the 2013 mm, video has to do with me catching an individual on a street corner admitting that a San Diego police officer put him on a corner to engage in gang stalking. So, how can I get any help? How can I get any help? Yeah. Are these crimes protected by, by federal instruments like NSA letters? That's what David Larson's saying. You can go to YouTube and type in James Lambert and David Larson down the pipe, uh, 52211 five and listen to the um, Federal Jack down the rabbit hole videos. David Larson and James Lambert, it's actually James Walbert, but they spelled his name wrong. You guys spelled it James Lambert. And they talk about gang stalking and non-consensual human experimentation. Let me tell you something right now. When you go to YouTube and type in Timothy W. Bioethics Issues and he talks about neurocognitive weapons and brain entrainment and then look at every single video that's on the sidebar that comes up as a result of you typing that in, you will see numerous, numerous individuals going before the President's Commission, the Bioethics Commission, complaining about being tortured. Remember the book I showed you? Electronic Torture, Electronic Rape Technology and Gang Stalking. Okay? This other book right here has got an implant in the guy's head. Organized stalking is mentioned constantly throughout this book, repeatedly and constantly. So these crimes got to be protected by somebody for there to be over 500,000 walking and talking targets of this crime right now in America that know they're targets of this crime. A lot of targets are walking around not even having a name for it yet. 
So why is not one person getting any type of uncorrupted legal assistance or victim uh, crime vic victim assistance in reference to us being targets of this crime? Because it's organized crime in the system. If anything happens to me in San Diego, California, if I am arrested, if I am put in a uh, county mental health, any hospital, psychiatric floor, or if they put me in a group home, I want you to know that the San Diego police members of the Western and Eastern, especially the Eastern Division, Police Department headquarters were directly involved, excuse me, with the obstruction of justice in reference to the MTS video, MTS sent me of being altered of me being assaulted. They were directly connected to, not uh, flat out to my face, denying me the fact that they would make a police report concerning the fact that I'm a gang stalking target, as well as the San Diego District Attorney's Office. This, it, it appears now possibly the City Attorney's Office and um, USD, UCSD, SDSU in San Diego Public Libraries. I gotta go, I'm in San Diego, California. I'm not involved in any illegal activity whatsoever. Whatsoever. I made sure that I minded my own business when I came back out here on August 8, 2011, up to this date, January 20, June 23, 2013, because I know how these freaks operate. I know how they operate. They will use any excuse, any relationship, anything they can to sink their teeth into it in order to discredit any evidence that I knew I would obtain because it was my intention to obtain evidence once I got out here. Just like I did in Michigan. And they know they've been caught. If any YouTube channel of mine gets shut down, they did it. Trust me, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I gotta go. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. Please stay tuned for updated videos that are soon to come. Thank you.